This video is about Teapot. A teapot is a honeypot platform by the German company Telecom and they combine multiple honeypots into one. Um, but let's first start off with what a honeypot actually is. A honeypot is a fake service disguised to be a real one. For example, an SSH service. And its goal is to attract attackers and then extract information from these attackers. So this can be really interesting to find out uh, where they come from, what country they come from, what their ISP is, um, but also what kind of usernames and passwords they try to use, and then what kind of commands they run once they get in. For example, where do, do they get their backdoors from? Uh, maybe you can even download one of these backdoors and take a look at the, uh, at the binary. <laughs> um, and setting up a honeypot isn't that hard. Uh, but what makes Teapot Teapot is uh, the ability to get multiple honeypots up uh, up and running in a relatively uh, short amount of time, um, and also get pretty dashboards. If you do this yourself, you you spend a lot more time uh, downloading and configuring these services and then creating dashboards from them. Teapot is a open source project which I really like, and um, they have a lot of information about the project on github for example you can see what kind of honeypots they inc include and maybe if you're in the security community you'd recognize some of these names um, also a uh, teapot comes with cockpit for managing your service uh, server with a web interface uh, and of course it comes with the elk stack to help visualize the data and this is really the bread and butter of this project so the TLDR is you'd have to have a uh, strong enough server to run this on, a server with enough resources. They recommend at least eight gigabytes of RAM and a no non-filtered internet connection. So running this at home isn't really ideal because uh, first of all, you'd attract a lot of unwanted attention to your home internet connection. Maybe you, have o you already have services running uh, and people will try to attack that too once they think they found another v vulnerable service from Teapot. Um, so that's not real, really ideal. So what we can do actually is get it up and running in the cloud relatively quickly. And to do that we get one of the pre-built ISO images. And you can also build one yourself but we're going to go with one of the releases. Scroll down here and here's the teapot.iso. So I use a VPS provider called Vulture and they allow you to uh, upload your own ISO file for use with their v VPS. So what you can do is copy the, the link here from GitHub, then go to Vulture, click add ISO, and then just paste the link in here and then click upload. And after about a minute, the ISO will be ready. So going to pause the video here and I'll be back once the download is complete. Okay, so the ISO is now available. That actually went a lot quicker than I was expecting. I didn't even stop the recording because uh, well, once I went over to the recording software and clicked the stop button, it already uh, completed. So let's go ahead and create a new instance with the instances tab and then deploy instance. Um, and here we go ahead and choose cloud compute and then we can select a server location. So the location might be pretty interesting. Maybe a server in London will be uh, more or less attacked than one in Amsterdam or in the, in the United States. So I'm going to go with Amsterdam because you might be able to hear from my accent, but that's the, the, the closest to me. Uh, then scroll down a bit and you can select the server type. Go ahead and click upload ISO and then select the the teapot uh, ISO you just uploaded. After that, we come to the server size. We're gonna go ahead and go with the $40 uh, dollar a month option. That includes eight gigabytes of RAM, which teapot recommends. Um, you pay per hour with Vulture. So if you don't want to pay 40 bucks an hour, but only leave it running for say a week or two weeks, you can, and it will only cost 10 or 20 bucks. Um, if you use my link in the description, you actually get a $100 credit to try this out. So let's uh, scroll down a bit and then provide a host name and then click deploy now. And the server will be uh, started up. 
and uh, it actually says installing here but it can't actually install the ISO we'd have to do that ourselves but it is a pretty simple process so just wait a bit until this says uh, running and then we can get into the console and complete the installation okay the server is now running let's click on the server name and then click on view the console you might actually get this this message about no bootable devices being found but after a few seconds the server will reboot and the ISO file will be inserted as you can see here it's a server connected just go ahead and close the console and then open it again and you will be greeted with this boot screen just go ahead and hit enter and the Debian installation will start going to make the console a bit bigger here so we can see everything okay now it uh, asks us to select our region so I'm in Europe Netherlands American English is the key map I'd like to use now it asks us for the location of our mirror uh, it makes sense to choose the closest mirror to you so I'm going to go with Netherlands and then with the default deb.debian.org um, and we don't need a HTTP proxy at Vulture so the installer will now grab all the necessary files from the internet and install the system and after that's done it will automatically reboot As you can see the installation is complete and once it reboots it actually goes back to the initial uh, boot screen. Uh, we don't want that so uh, what we need to do now is close the console then go to settings, custom ISO and then click remove ISO. This will reboot the server and remove the ISO. And as you can see the installation is complete and we are greeted with, the, with grub and it will boot from the hard drive. On first boot, uh, Teapot will do all the things to, uh, well, install Teapot. On first boot, you get to choose what kind of installation you want. So for a standard installation, you can see it recommends 8 gigabytes of RAM and a SSD of around 128 gigabytes. So we're going to go with that one. Um, what you could also do is set up multiple sensors. Um, so multiple uh, teapot instances connected to one each, uh, one, one each other. Um, we're not going to do that in this video. We're just going to go with the standard installation. Um, but if you're interested, it might be worth to uh, look into these different modes of installation. So after selecting that, it asks us for a password. And this is for the system and console user. And this is, by default, this is TSEC. So I'm going to go uh, and enter a secure password. And then it asks us for our web username. TSEC is not allowed, unfortunately. So I'm going to just enter Nick and then uh, ask us to confirm. So yes, this is my username and then enter a password again. So now it will install all the teapot components and this will take a while, so I'll speed up the video again here. All right, the installation is now done and it will show you uh, a few IP addresses and a login prompt. So what you can do now is close the console because your teapot is up and running and it will already start collecting information. Um, so what we can do is log in to the console but um, it won't show as much because well it just started up and um, nobody has attacked our server yet. So let's wait about 15 minutes and then see what kind of data we've collected. 15 minutes became a couple of hours. Uh, so that means we have a bit more data to look at. Um, once you go to the address from the console, uh, you can see this, this pretty dashboard here. 
and um, we have a, a couple of options cockpit is the management console you can uh, log in here and I have to accept the self-signed certificate you can log in here with the TSEC user you created during installation and here you can see details about your system for example how busy your CPU is or how full the RAM is as you can see 8 gigabytes of RAM is not not quite enough it actually needs a little bit more but I haven't found any problems with this configuration so but let's go back and click Kibana because that's that's where the magic happens and you can see there are a couple of dashboards here to choose from um, teapot is an aggregate uh, dashboard that combines uh, data from multiple honeypots so as you can see we received uh, 369 nice packet uh, attacks in the last 15 minutes as you can see here the range is set to 15 minutes uh, of that, uh, I don't know, those are only just cavalry attacks and those are a uh, fake uh, SSH server with, with a fake shell, pretty nice. Um, and here on the map you can see where the attacks came from. And if you scroll down you can see a histogram of the attacks per honeypot. What ports were attacked, what countries these attacks came from. Um, but let's not sort by 15 minutes, but by th mm, 4 hours. So, 4 hours ago. And then hit update. And as you can see, it loads a lot more data now. 5000 calorie attacks. That's pretty nice. As you can see, you can also see a breakdown of the usernames and passwords that were that were uh, attempted. Um, and you can also see the Suricata alert. Suricata is a intrusion detection system, and here you can see the types of attacks it detected and how many times it detected that specific attack. You can see the source IPs. So this guy really likes to attack our server here. And here you can see the ASNs or autonomous system numbers or ISPs that attacks us. As you can see DigitalOcean has a problem with, uh, with abuse. So let's go back now to dashboards here and click Kauri. Kauri is the SSH honeypot and in it includes a fake shell. So what happens if I try to connect to this IP address um, on port 22, I will get a login prompt and then um, the first time it will say f uh, that my password is incorrect. But after the second or third time, it will actually let me in and it will look like you're logged into a Ubuntu server. But in reality, you're logged into a fake shell and everything you type is being logged. So. Um, we can see where the attacks came from. Again, it says last 15 minutes. So I'm going to put in four hours again. Say update. There we go. 5,370 attacks. And most of them on port 22. But Kauri is also a Telnet honeypot. So most of the IP addresses were, or most of the attacks that were noticed were from known attackers. Um, but also some uh, IPs of bad reputation or Tor exit nodes. I don't know where it actually gets this data from though. Maybe you can leave a uh, comment uh, so uh, we know where it gets this IP reputation information. So here we can see that the, the username and uh, password tag loud again, but where it gets interesting is the input top 10. So. Um, as you can see, 24 uh, people in a fake shell typed U name minus A to get some information about the system. Um, you can see people uh, try to get the CPU info. This might be some detection mechanism to detect a honeypot. Um, so that's really interesting. And here you can see the uh, types of data they try to download. So 
Um, it actually saves this to a location for further analysis if you want. Um, but I was interested in what this what 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 this file was. What what is this guy hosting on slash ssh that they want to run on my server so much? So what I did is I went to hybridanalysis.com and I put in the um, uh, <laughs> the address to the zip file or, or gz gz it's a gzipped um, file um, and it immediately detected it as malicious because virus total has already seen this file and um, it's a crypto miner it's really that simple it's just a crypto miner and as you can see other po people with cowrie honeypots have already also detected this file being downloaded so we're certainly not the first um, but this file was seen two days ago it appears so that's really funny okay let's go back and have a look at uh, shit tricks honeypots again let's put this at four hours to get the most data there were some attacks on a Cisco a Citrix uh, honeypot because Citrix uh, was vulnerable a couple of months back and this mimics a vulnerable Citrix server so as you can see we were attacked from I guess Germany wow okay and you can see where they these people came from Hetzna and um, uh, what I tried to do. I hope you enjoyed this video and I've inspired you to set up your own honeypot and um, I'm certainly curious as to what your uh, results will be. Will you get as many attacks as I did in the in, in four hours? Maybe more, maybe less? Let me know. Uh, you can put the results in the description and also let me know if you what location you put your server in maybe uh, as I said in the beginning maybe your server in the US will get more or less attacks than um, uh, than one in the Netherlands thank you for watching if you want to see more of these kinds of videos in the future please consider hitting the subscribe button until next time